What internet marketing expert should you spend your valuable time listening to? Listen to someone who has over 20 years of web marketing experience and hundreds of website marketing success stories. That man is Aaron Sparks from Site Strategics. And this is Edge of the Web Radio. Hey, in this segment, we're talking about um, something interesting that came to light here over the last week. And there was a story written by uh, 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 the Indy Star that talked about the Indiana Economic Development Corp and uh, certain uh, uh, potential problems or, or at least perceived problems in, in how that fund, those funds of that particular group were actually going and delivered. We wanted to talk about that and actually bring Doug uh, Doug in on talking about some of these uh, uh, these issues uh, as it res- as it reflects in inside of uh, just general funding from the go- yeah. from, from the government as well as just some issues inside of journalism and what it really means to the business growth of Indiana. So uh, we kind of have an open forum here on talking about the article and uh, we'll go forward from there. Doug, give us a, a back. A backstory of what has happened here. Well, you know, I, I, I uh, someone had contacted me and, and told me, "Hey, did you see this story?" Because uh, a lot of the clients that we touch are Indianapolis technology-based companies, Indiana Certainly. technology-based companies, and so a lot of our clients are touched by the IEDC, which is a economic development committee. Mm-hmm. Basically, they have some public funds and then they have some federal funds, and they make decisions basically on who to give tax grants to, right. um, who to give growth money to secure loans, uh, they, they can basically, they can make or break a company. And, uh, you know, the, the irony of it is that I'm not a fan of government, you know, picking lose, winners and losers. We've right. seen at a federal level, it's been a, Absolutely. It's, it's been a disaster. Um, but what I can say is because Indianapolis is such a, a small investment community, and I say Indianapolis when I'm talking about Indiana, mm-hmm. just because that's a center you know, focus sure. um, is, is sometimes there's not enough money to move a company. So, you know, you, you have someone like Gravity Ventures, who is a fantastic, you know, uh, you know, mom and pop kind of investment firm started with Christian Anderson mm-hmm. and everything. And they're able to give a little bit of money to a company. And it's that small bump to maybe hire a second person or a sure. third person. But it's not enough to put them on a level playing field with, let's say, a Boston or San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Boston, I read, has, you know, 3.6 billion dollars in investment funding oh, wow. Boston alone just the city you know and then you got San Francisco I think is 11 <laughs> you know gazillion or no, 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 no. whatever it is right? right well in Indianapolis we have a really great um because it's in the Midwest, because prices are low, because mm-hmm. we have this private uh and public uh uh college system mm-hmm. feeding the talent here um, we can really produce great companies, and and we can do it at a fraction of the cost. I, I think I think some of the some of the stuff that IEDC has done is fantastic. That have said that if you do a startup here in Indianapolis compared to San Francisco, you can last two and a half times longer. Just last. So let's say you're you, you know so when you're when the, you're talking the dollars about, go a heck of a lot yeah, longer. So when you're yeah. talking about the the opportunity to actually employ people to create profitable companies to create tax revenue, mm-hmm. which then helps helps the community, um, this is a really, really uh, fantastic organization that's trying to grow that. Now, it's a small circle. You got that right. So so, uh, I read the article. I I was honestly... um, angry enough to talk to you and say, let's, let's do a show about this. Um, because I, I really feel that this, this article does an absolute disservice, uh, to this community rather than talking about the pros and, um, the, the positives of all of these companies that have been touched with this, with this investment fund, all of the people that have been employed by it, all of the growth that these guys have seen, um, they took, you know, a, a couple relationships between, you know, people in the IED, and relatives that Mm -hmm. owned parts of companies and said, oh, my God, you know, the the," and Gary Varvel even did a a cartoon that basically Mm -hmm. said the IEDC was just serving up money, uh, you know, to the old boys club. And and I I I, where I'm upset at it is this is just a hit job. Mm -hmm. It's one single shallow view and there's a lot of words that that, right. that that the reporter uses in this that are vague. You know, this person was accused of. Mm-hmm. This person has a relationship with. Uh, he uses, you know, Republican a couple times in there. It, and, it implies disparity, but but there's no there's no evidence of, of none. Of, 
uh, problematic dealings. In fact, uh, the, the IEDC, as well as a number of other uh, organizations, were reviewing the relationship, and they saw nothing unethical that well, was going on. A, c- a couple of things. You know, uh, these people that represent the IEDC and, and Elevate Ventures, many of these people were asked by the government to volunteer their time to do some of this. Right. They they were not they were not out to get government money. They were literally asked by Mitch Daniels, mm-hmm. "Can you come run this?" And and for for the listeners, who is that? Who is Elevate? Uh, so Elevate Ventures is was a, originally a venture capital firm, um, and Marty can probably better explain mm-hmm. it than I I do. But now they've converted into a nonprofit firm, gotcha. and they're employed by the IEDC to basically do due diligence. Due diligence means basically investigate a company's technology, people, leadership, sure. books, uh, and determine whether or not they're a viable. Uh, company for investment. Now, why would the government actually hire a, 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 a party to be able to do just this? Uh, one experience, yep. right? You know, if you're a government bureaucrat, how much experience do you have running a, a private, you know, private company? Right. Um, you know, and and two is Elevate. Um, it's really funny because they say, um, you know, Elevate's founder and chairman, a well-connected businessman. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, who else do you want in charge of a company that's going to take public and private funds and invest it than a well-connected businessman? No, I mean, I, I, want, I want a mid-tier government worker to actually yeah. bet, uh, bet all that out. That's what yeah. I want. Yeah, and the other, the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, before this uh, partnership was formed, the, the state itself, depending on who you ask, was, mm-hmm. was doing a less than Thorough, ideal yeah. job. <laughs> in investing in technology companies. Mm -hmm. Um, And and we've seen enough of the failures um, talked about by the star as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you take a step back and think about why this partnership was even formed to begin with, it was done for, I think, all the right reasons. Yep. Um, You know, another thing that's important to keep in mind is that the way companies grow is they'll get funding from say, the IEDC via Elevate. Mm -hmm. And as they continue to grow, they'll be able to go out and get additional funding from other groups, uh, from other investors. So uh, the IEDC actually paves the way sometimes for relationship building of other private investors. That's exactly it. If if I'm an investor and I have money and and Elevate Ventures goes out and does does the due diligence and they actually say, you know, we're going to provide some funding for this, Typically, that opens the door. It opens the gateway for other private investors yep. to come in and give money because private mm-hmm. investors can't afford that due diligence mm-hmm. sometimes either. Um, so Marty makes a, an incredible point that that this is this is something that really opens the gateway of investment. Mm-hmm. Which, which the, the I guess what what makes me so angry about this article is that. We have a really tiny community here. Absolutely, um, you can't back in. One of these investors can't back up without bumping into another investor, um, and there's not a lot of money out there. Mm-hmm. Marty and I have met with uh, Chase, you mm-hmm. know, Bank Huntington mm-hmm. Bank. Uh, you know, we we have we know this inside and out. Sure, you can't borrow money right now. It's frozen. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't get. Uh, you know, I can't even get. You know, I'm a military. You know, veteran-owned organization mm-hmm. getting SBA loans is 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 tied up right now everything is tied up and these guys have the money right uh both public and private and the ability to pick some of these companies that they know right. they know they're going to grow they know they're going to do well and actually get them that funding and and the funny thing is is the companies that they talk about in this article are doing fantastic. They're doing well. And they're doing well not because, um, uh, you know, they're doing well because they got that money Mm -hmm. to be able to grow and and invest in marketing. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And and of which I open, you know, I have to be open Mm -hmm. that we do get some of this funding, not directly from IEDC or or Elevate, but, you know, many of our clients get this Mm -hmm. money and they're able to pay us for it. And that's something to talk about in the next segment is how this affects uh, not only the the, the receiving companies, but also all the ripple effect that happens inside of the Indianapolis tech community. Hey, we're going to be continuing our discussion about the IEDC, new business startups in Indiana, and much more coming up about uh, an article that came through the Indianapolis Star here last week. Hit (laughs) job. 
<laughs> that was Doug that said that. <laughs> um, uh, regarding uh, Indiana Economic Development Corp funding of uh, through an organization called Elevate that actually funds small, medium startup businesses and it's some capital investment for tech companies. And they actually hired Elevate to be able to vet these companies out because the government wasn't doing a substantial job in that. So... And, uh, and we should say that, yeah. that it's, it's expanding. So for listeners out there that are listening, um, IDC and, and Elevate are, are actually, they have a, a minority program right now that they're trying to, mm -hmm. to, to invest in minority. And you don't even have to be a tech company. You can be a service-oriented company um, mm -hmm. that's looking for startup funding. So so this, this, is, this is really, uh, you know, I mean, for all listeners, this is, hey, where is my taxpayer money going mm -hmm. and how is my you know community getting uh, help by this and yeah. it and it's everywhere from northern right. indiana you know uh you know i, I was reading uh, elevate ventures has has uh gotten local communities in northern indiana to mm -hmm. to commit 2.2 million dollars in private money hmm. private money uh to help that's not local taxpayer money exactly yeah, that's, that's private, private money. money and then southwest uh 300k um, to, to get some full-time Elevate resources in the area. Funta fantastic. And, and Elevate Elevate has these connections uh, internationally and mm -hmm. nationally, you know, f with venture capital firms and technology firms and everything else. They've got their hands on the pulse of, yeah. of where technology needs to be going. So it was a uh, it was a it was a brilliant thing, in my opinion, you know, for IEDC to basically um, say, okay, we've got this amazing right. investment resource here in town. How can we latch on to them and, of course, pay for it, mm -hmm. you know? But how can we get them to help steer the direction of the investment community, steer the direction of the technology mm -hmm. company, and 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 grow? This incredible, you know, if you're talking about, you know, let's see what's doing better. Is the local technology scene doing better or is the local newspaper scene doing better? <laughs> you know, um, um, Campbell, the, the, the reporter here, he talks, he makes a big deal that, you know, Elevate, he makes... The CEO makes four hundred thousand dollars a year. Well, right. Campbell, your Gannett chairman makes four point six million dollars a year on a losing enterprise. Elevate is growing companies, so yep. I, I really have a problem with this hit job. It's 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 a terrible. It's yellow journalism, in my opinion, and it's and it's and it's well, the, and the, it's not doing our. We have we really struggle as a community Absolutely. right now to get technology off the ground. We have winners like a Primo and Exact Target and Cha Cha Angie's list, mm -hmm. but but we have an entire second and tertiary layer of companies out there that are sprouting. Uh, you know, I, we can talk about some of them. You know, uh, Compendium and Tinderbox and mm -hmm. Max Trade and Smarter Remarketer. Um, Cha Cha's launched Social Reactor, there right on Interactive. Yep. We have Delivera, who's been out there for a long time. We have all of these, you know, great companies that are sprouting. Uh, you can go to a Verge event here locally if you want to look that up. Mm -hmm. And and you're going to find tons of companies. Developer Town, uh, Sprout Box down out of, right, uh, you right, know, right. Th th this, is, this is where the jobs are at. There's innovation that's it's happening all around us. Innovation, high-paid jobs. Uh, technology is absolutely the future, this knowledge based economy that we're in. Mm -hmm. And, and so for, uh, you know, for, to me, for a journalist, I, I'm, I'm not upset with his accusation. I'm upset that he didn't take the time to tell the other side of the story. I'm upset that he didn't take the time to talk about the winners here, the mm -hmm. number of employees hired, the profitability. If you go to the Elevate Ventures site, you can download the information. Mm -hmm. They have it there. Uh, based on 38 economic companies surveyed, revenue grew from $107 million in 2011 to $133 million in 2012. And it's expected to grow to 172 million in 2013. That's a 27 percent average annual growth rate, and that's jobs from 747 in 2011 to 936 in 2012. And it's expected to grow to over 1,100 in 2013. 22.5 percent growth per year in high tech, high paid jobs. Uh, meanwhile. The Indianapolis Star just made another round of layoffs. So who, who do I trust? 
with my money? Right. Who do I trust with the story here? You know, the article uh, also mentioned that, uh, uh, keep those stats in mind, because they also mentioned that they were distributing fewer dollars. So get this right, is that previous to Elevate, they were actually spending, you know, they distributed $29.3 million, the state did, with under Elevate's guidance. Yeah. They actually distributed around $19.9 million to various companies to date. That's uh, whenever Elevate can, can took over in April 11. Right. So are you telling me they're actually better stewards of the money? And on top of that, they're kicking the jobs up because of their stewardship of those investments? I'm thinking that there's a parallel here. You're, you're absolutely right. And not only that, it's important to keep in mind that the, the investment is public-private, right? Mm-hmm. And when they first started, it was one2 uh, private dollars right. per one dollar of public dollar. You know what that's up over now? Yep. It's five to one now. They have grown private funding of these companies yep. by four hundred percent. They are paving the way for jobs and and high paid jobs mm-hmm. here in the area, and they're pay, paving the way for these companies to be successful and to compete with these with these other industries. You know, Michigan has a public private partnership just like this, right? And they were kicking our butts, and so now we're coming back. You know, Boston has it. Every every major you know, a uh, city that's going after tech, mm-hmm. you know, does this types of thing. So we finally are starting to compete. We're finally starting to go the right direction. <laughs> and, and now we have a local newspaper who should be cheering, cheering on the growth, yep. the employment, the tax base, everything else. And instead, they're 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 tying a noose around its neck. It's it's unfortunate. You know, and 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 to Doug's point earlier. The investment landscape is changing in the state. Uh, investment in life sciences is mm-hmm. has dropped, mm-hmm. and I think the state recognizes that the future isn't big box retail and and warehouses. Technology is a growth sector in the state, mm-hmm. and to your point, Aaron, when you talk about um, more careful investment, you know part of the reason why this partnership was was created was because the state wasn't doing you know the best job at vetting the so-called investments and what that led to is um you know taxpayer money jo- lost job right. goals that weren't met yeah. and then the state is faced with a with a, a terrible problem of how to claw back that in that money that's already been spent yeah, so, so in years past, they didn't. They weren't able to recoup any of that. So with the new laws of transparency, like you were mentioning before, there's there's opportunity now for the state to be able to, to take care of that money, but they needed a steward to be able to help guide that correctly. Yeah, right. and so, some of the good things, I, I you know, you have to say some of the good <clears throat> things that come out of this, right, are, mm-hmm. are you know, uh, Governor Pence has ordered a review and, right. and ordered transparency involved. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's great. But... It's still not going to stop what what this reporter talks about, and that's these good old boy networks. Mm-hmm. That's that's all it is is a, a good old boy network. It's the cream of the crop. It's the people with the funds that that want to give it to the rest of these companies. Right. You know, this is where we need to go. If you want to start a tech business here in town, good luck trying to go to the bank if you don't have you know, uh, millions of dollars, you know, of your own good luck trying to go to a venture capital firm. Um, you have to go to one of these public private, you know, entities Mm -hmm. prove, uh, that's the other good thing is you have to prove your revenue model. You have to prove your books. You have to open up your doors. Um, they have to review them and then you can possibly get some money for growth, but you're not going to get it any other way right now. And when you look at the bigger picture, look at companies like uh, while well, I live in Zionsville, so look at uh, Interactive Intelligence, mm-hmm. a great success story. Look at a little, not so little company called Moby, based mm-hmm. in in Zionsville, just got mentioned in a in a Gartner report. Um, many people don't understand how significant that is, yep. but that's really great news uh, for Indiana. Yeah, and it and it happens because of the relationships that these people have in the community. I, I'm going to, you know, full disclosure, right? Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Feniger from, from Elevate Ventures has, mm-hmm. um, you know, called me a couple of times. He spent, I, I don't know how many days with us. Uh, he reviewed our books, reviewed our accounting, mm-hmm. looked at our business. He has given me in 
incredible amounts of advice and I didn't pay for that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I didn't pay for that. And that's what these guys do every single day. Every single day they're on the phone. They're trying to make this community win. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to feed their own pockets. It's, it's just that they know more about this stuff than everybody else does. And, and we need to utilize those resources, not, not all of a sudden start attacking them. We, we have Certainly. a hard enough time raising money in this area without attacking the very people that can help us the most. And, and don't, don't kneecap companies. Uh, yeah. Don't keep kneecapping an organization because you may not actually uh, align yourself with uh, I, politics or what have you. Allow a balanced approach of, of reviewing the performance of these organizations. You have to enter in, into the there's, there's like no that. reason why these companies can't be investing their money in overseas right. investments in other cities mm -hmm. that have better tax rates, <laughs> that have better That's everything. True. And and if you keep hitting these guys over the head with this, with this, uh, I don't know what the verb is, re <laughs> adjective <laughs> reporting, you, they're going to just go elsewhere. They can go elsewhere and not get bothered like this. We'll have uh, our uh, links on the site at edgeoftheweberradio.com. You know what? You certainly want to uh, check that out and uh, voice your opinion on this. But this is an open forum that we're going to uh, open up comments on the site to, to, to give some feedback from, from our listeners. We want to hear what you have to say. So check this out. You're listening to Edge of the Web Radio with Aaron Sparks. We're online with exclusive podcasts, the latest web news, and links at edgeofthewebradio.com.